Yeah, so I just wanted to point out here that one of the things that would definitely help uh, Jake in the future if he wants to understand the history of Christian metaphysics and the distinctions that he, he's not able to actually make is uh, this great book here, Christian Theology and the uh, End of Ancient Metaphysics. And this is the, a new recent book in the scholarship. Uh, it, it's by Johann Zakhuber, and it's really good for pointing out that we don't, for example, think that the essence of God is a universal. This is a fundamental mistake. I don't know where he got this. Uh, I think he misunderstood the idea of the comparison between the Cappadocians saying that the essence of God is common, and therefore it's like the relationship between a universal and a particular, but the essence of God itself is not actually a universal in the sense of uh, the way that we understand universal. St. Maximus, so the confessor, famously see, uh, teaches, as does John Damascus, that universals are created. God is not created, and so universals cannot be the essence of God. So Jake misunderstood an analogy comparing the universal uh, relationship between uh, the creatures and the participation that they have in uh, the one in regard to the many versus the uh, relationship uh, of the one and the many in God. It's just an analogy that Cappadocians make, and so Jake misunderstood that very fundamental misunderstanding. Jake equivocated on uh, the term power. Uh, so I'm going to quit screen sharing there. <clears throat> so what I said was, is that for that argument to hold, which is actually a eunomian argument, uh, the the notion uh, of begetting would have to be an energy. And this is the argument that Eunomius makes against Nyssa and uh, against Eunomius. <clears throat> and the argument is that begetting is not a power. So Jake's just equivocating on the distinction between hypostatic properties and powers. And the fact that Roman Catholics uh, claim this really has nothing to do with our debate. Roman Catholics claim all kinds of things. Jake doesn't believe in Roman Catholicism. So he wants to try to use an argument as if that would have any weight in this debate really doesn't matter what Roman Catholics say. He says, I didn't reply to the LPT. I did reply to the LPT. I pointed out that his argument and his use of it relies on counting in one way, counting by identity. I specifically addressed twice now that both of us count by identity and both of us count by division. I gave multiple people in the past who count this way. Jake ignored all that. Jake acts like this is all made up. In, the, in recent uh, live streams and talks, he's actually acted like, why don't y'all count the way everybody does today? not even aware of the basic fact that the ancient medieval world counted also this way. I mentioned in my opening statement, first order and second order imposition, that certain things can be counted by identity and certain things can be counted by division even back in the ancient medieval world. This became a medieval distinction, first order, second order imposition. If we want to go back to my opening statement, <clears throat> I said that uh, you could think of things like let me see where I put this. You could uh, let me see. You could think of things like <clears throat> first order imposition would be things like mundane objects of uh, cats, cows, dogs. Uh, so they would be concrete objects in the world. And then you could think about <clears throat> uh, abstract objects like sets or laws of logic. Those would be counted by identity because it doesn't really make sense to think of, for example, uh, one third of a law of logic or one third of, of a, a, a a set of things, right? So abstract things in this case, created abstract things, <clears throat> would be counted by uh, identity. But things that might be parted or are divisible have to be counted by division. And this is actually in even today's literature. So Jake's acting like, we don't count this way today, dog. We don't count this way today. Oh, really? Well, I mean, I've got academic scholars here talking about the uh, theory of mathematics and countings like, like, like the uh, David Liebsman paper where he goes into great detail arguing that, no, actually, we do still count by division. You just have to be more nuanced about it. I specifically argued, again, that Jake, in his own accounting for the attributes and the essence, also counts by identity and by division. And he used the very terminology that relates to counting by division. And he got upset by that. He got a little rattled and they had to say, that's not what it means, bro. That's not what it means, dog. Now, he, he mentioned the idea of Unitarianism and uh, modes. Uh, Jake doesn't understand the difference between <clears throat> person, nature, and mode. It's very important for Trinitarian theology to make a distinct, distinction between hypostasis, nature, person, nature, and mode or tropos. Mode is the way that a thing exists. <clears throat> Islamic theology is kind of all over the place, and they use modality in a lot of different ways. It's kind of unclear and contradictory between you know, different uh, Islamic thinkers as to what exactly they think modality means. Sometimes it relates to parts-whole relationships. 
Sometimes it means relation to other objects. And sometimes it means the actual way that the mode in which it exists, the way a thing exists or how it exists. So in orthodox theology, we're using it in that sense of how a thing uh, exists. Pardon, I missed the reminder. Just so off today. So thank you very much. We're going to kick it over to, we're changing it up in the format. We're now going to the three sets of seven minute cross examinations. This is going to be more formal for our cross examinations, folks. So we are looking for just questions on one side and just question or just answers on the other side. With that, Jake, the floor is yours to interrogate Jay right now. Okay, just give me one second because I'm starting my timer here. Okay, I'm ready. Jay, so you said that uh, you're wondering where did I get this idea that the divine essence is a universal? So let me read you from your good friend, Dr. Bo Branson, in his PhD dissertation on page 168 on the section 4.2.1 UCI and hypothesis. In Gregory of Nyssa on Universals, Richard Cross argues persuasively, in my view, that St. Gregory and St. Basil both use the term usia synonymously with nature, and they conceive of this as a universal. And then in the rest of the section, he goes on to explain just that, that the divine essence is conceived of as a universal by the Cappadocians. So what do you have to say in response to your buddy saying that? Yeah, the Zach Huber book actually treats this, that the notion of universal uh, evolves over time between the way the Cappadocians use it and the way that the post-Chalcedonian uh, uh, fathers use it up into John Damascus and St. Maximus. So what's relevant for our debate in terms of uh, human universals is not whether or not God's essence is common, but whether or not there are created universals. So that's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but my so question, my question is, my question is, does Bo Branson believe in this passage and what he argues for in his dissertation that the divine essence is a universal? Yes or no? You're equivocating on the term universal. Does he say that the divine essence is a universal? You're equivocating on the term universal. Okay, so you want to answer universal, the question. Do you think universal? I'm going to move on. I'm going to move so, on. So universal only has the, one sense. I'm going to move on because it's clear it only has to one the audience. Sense. It's clear to the audience that you can't say that. Now let's move on to the LPT. You claim that I am counting by division within God. Explain how I'm counting by division within God. When you use the term inseparable. I use the term inseparable means that I'm separation counting by division. means division. Separation means How division. How am I using that to count? Well, you said that the attributes are inseparable. Exactly. But how many attributes are there? Are there one or many? Well, is God's essence one? How many attributes are there, one or many, according to my position? You have you you believe in many. Okay, they're many, and yet they're inseparable. So if they're inseparable from each other and there's many, how am I counting by division, genius? No, in terms of the essence, you count by division by saying that it's one. No, there's one essence. Right. That's, that's well, where, right. Where, where's it? So where he's is undivided, there? correct? Where is there a counting by division? There is none. Okay, exactly. It doesn't so mean that you're it doesn't it, mean that you're it, saying it divided. Made a huge so you're not gonna let you me even, you're not gonna let you not, it doesn't mean that you think he's divided. You don't, you don't even understand. The basics of this conversation. Let's I do move understand on. The basics let's, of it. let's let's move on. You don't understand the, now, the, the, the word. Now let now let's get to uh, some other issues. What is the difference between tefwid al mana and tefwid al kefia? I don't know your terms. You don't know. No. So you have no idea what that means. No. Okay, and yet you think you're able to critique our position when these are basic terms. Is your, relig is your religion made for all the exactly, world? Exactly. So, ex is yeah, it just but, for Arabs or but, all the world? No, but even when I'm critiquing the Trinity, I'm aware of the basic terms of what a hypostasis is, what well, an idea is. I'm under. I understand the basics. So is this of is this a debate about grammar? Or this is a, is a debate, debate about, about the fact position. that you're ignorant of our tradition. Thank you very much. Now uh, let's so move a, on. So you want to make it about grammar? Next, and let's move on to the next question. Why is it problematic to believe that the persons are identical to the essence as Thomas Aquinas and many Catholics hold? Why is that problematic? Uh, because it basically ends up in reducing person to nature and it would be modalism. Okay, so you, would you consider that position heretical? Yeah, if you mean identity in the sense of uh, reductionist identity. Okay, so the Trinity, if you conceive of when you say the Father is God, that the Father is identical to God, would you agree that that's logically problematic because then it would follow that the father is identical to the son? 
Well, identity can be a, uh, the sense of is of identity or a predication. Yeah, I'm saying, and the Catholics make it explicit. There's there's no difference between the person and the nature Correct. in terms of the Thomists. So right. they say the Father is identical to the nature or essence, and so are the Son and the Holy Spirit, which by the logic of identity would follow that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are identical to each other. Do you agree with that critique? I think you could make that argument. That's why I said modalism. Do you know what okay. modalism is? Yeah, you exactly. know what modalism is? Yes, I do know what okay. modalism is. So, so you're just asking I, me again what I, I already I, said. It, no, because I want, so you're asking to be, me again I, what want, I want you to be more explicit, but I'm supposed to ask questions, not you. Thank you very much. Now, how many persons are there in the Trinity? Three. Are they separated by time or space? No. So you count the persons by identity and not division, right? Correct. Okay, does God have one eternal attribute or energy or more than one? More than one. Are his eternal attributes separated from each other by time or space? No. Okay, so you count the attributes by identity and not division, right? Correct. Okay, so if we count gods in the Trinity by the same method of identity, how many gods would we count? Depends on what God picks out. If we're talking about the persons. Three. So there would be three gods if we counted by identity and the same method that we count the attributes or eternal energies and the persons, correct? Right. Okay. Your friend Bo Banson says... Little, little G God, as you know. Okay. So your friend... So there would be three little G gods. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your friend Bo Branson says that today we count by identity. So that would mean by the standard way in which we count today, there would be three gods in the Trinity, correct? The way that we count today is talking about post frega Okay, so and that's, by, and that's says, analytical. And I'm going to quote what he says. I'm going to quote what counting he says. Counting by identity. So today we count. So you don't S. want me to answer. Today anything. we count. No, I'm answering. I'm going to give you more. Yeah, you're answering. Yeah, you're answering. Today, exactly. today you ask count, the questions and then you today answer. Today we count F's by one logical subjects that are discernible from, or at least not identical to one another, and are F. That is, X and Y are diff. If if X and Y are different in any way and are both F-ish, we count them as two F's. So that's in his explanation that we count today by identity, yet you're quoting these other sources, which is not even my argument. My argument is that you're inconsistent in your methodology. So do you have no, any, only if you think that you, you only if you think you, that have, you count in one way? No, no, no. It's not about one counting. I already forgive me. I already addressed in. them. I got to. Yeah. I've got to see if uh, you can ask a question, Jake, just to keep it as strict as possible. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question. What is the justification or argument for why we must count persons and attributes in God by identity, but count gods by another method other than simply trying to avoid that you're a polytheist? By the example that I gave from first order and second order imposition and the way that all of the ancient world counted. So there is no justification. That you're not, was, you're not that asking why argument. we count the attributes and the persons by identity but we and count we because count different gods things. Are, because divisions. what what you can't understand is that different. Gotta, things are I'll give you a chance ways. to answer exactly. The question, but you're not giving. Jay, an ad, but, I, and then I've got to wrap us up. I give you. I'll give you a chance to answer the question, Jay, and then I've got to wrap us up. Okay. That's can I can I answer what he question. asked? He just talked the whole time and didn't let me answer. You can <laughs> answer. You can answer. The Divinity raises the humanity of Christ through theosis, and that's exactly what we experience.